the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you could join us today. In this episode, Pastor Jeremy is teaching on how to win the fight of faith. We believe this message is going to strengthen, encourage you, and can change your life forever. Let's head in there right now. Every moment that we spend praying in the Holy Ghost, it gives us enduring, long-lasting strength. You see, it's the flesh that gives up easy. I've seen that in my little children, and I'm responsible to build some character on the inside of them so that they don't give up easy. Because what do kids want to do? I quit. Things stop going your way. First thing you want to do, and hey, be, just admit it as an adult, it's exactly the same. I quit. Things aren't going your way. You just want to quit. You know that's the standard of the flesh. God, he doesn't quit. He keeps going. He's, you know, alpha and omega. He's the beginning and the end. Yeah. <laughs> <He'll>, <laughs> I already mentioned it, but the reign of our God has no end. He's going to be long-lasting. And if we're filled with his spirit, we're going to be long-lasting and enduring to the end. Somebody say amen. amen. Now go to Galatians chapter 5. Say it boldly. Thank God for the word. Galatians 5, 16, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17 says, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things you wish. Right, right there, that verse could explain a lot of people's life. It's like they can never get on track. And I can tell you why. Because the flesh is their standard. What is that? The flesh is being sense ruled. You literally go by your senses, what you see, taste, smell, hear. That's all you go by. See, I always say this, and if you've been up here and people that come up here told me later, oh, I see what you're talking about, Pastor. I always say this before I re receive the grace to stand here in this holy desk. I say, I'm not moved by people or their faces. Because people like to mad mug the preacher, but they could be, I know this, dealing with pain, et cetera, different things. Speaking of, Bill, I haven't forgot about you. We're going to lay hands on you here in just a little bit, okay? Well, let me just tell you this. Don't let me forget. Stand up, jump up and down, do whatever you got to do to get my attention before I leave today. Amen? And if you need prayer that bad, you come up too, praise God. But, but here's the thing. Most people spend the majority of their time, Monday through Friday, the flesh is their standard. They do what they want to do, what they feel like doing. And so they never do the things that they wish. There's a vast difference in having good intentions and wishing you did something and actually doing it. I wish I would have walked in the call of God on my life. Hopefully that's not you at the end of your life. Hopefully you did walk in God's call and what he called you to do and walk that thing out. Let's go to Galatians 5.18. It says, but if, aren't you thankful for this one? How many are thankful for this verse? But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Wow. Well, there's a reason for that I won't go into right now, but verse 19 gives us a list. Most Christians don't know this is in their Bible. Now, the works of the flesh. So, see, he, he told us already, the flesh and the spirit's like they're at war. That doesn't mean you're this bipolar person and at war in yourself. That's not what he's saying. He's talking about if you set the flesh as your standard or you set the spirit as your standard, those two will go to war. Well, I'm going to let you know right now, you just got to be ready. You come up in a remnant end time church like this, where you got a pastor that's going to encourage you to set a new standard and go by the Spirit of God. There will be well-meaning folks in your life, some friends, some family, that don't want to change the standard and will try to get you back to their standard. And so it means it costs you friends and family. And I hate that. I wish everyone was like, hey, a new standard, let's do this. Let's follow the Spirit, and let's set that as our standard. We can't walk according to the flesh. We're going to die spiritually. We read that out of Romans. But right here, Galatians is explaining the Holy Spirit through Paul, the apostle, a lot of people's lives. And if the flesh is your standard, here's a list of what it looks like. It's evident. Adultery happens. That's a sexual relationship with anyone you're not married to. One man, one woman. Fornication. It's 
pretty much the same thing here. Uncleanness. If you study that out in the Greek, it has to do with homosexuality. Some people think it's not in the Bible. I keep hearing that. God is good with this. God is good with this. Oh, now when I read Galatians, lewdness, it's a work of the flesh. If I'm doing these things and I have the standard of the flesh, this is cool. This is what everybody does. And how dare you? Who do you think you are to say this is wrong? Verse 20, Galatians 5, idolatry. That's anything in first place above God. Sorcery. Boy, that one will catch your attention. Pharmakeia. Do I have to tell you what that translates to in English? Isn't that something? They used to call it sorcery back when King James was put out. Now we call it evening television commercials nonstop. Hatred. we got to keep moving. Contentions. Jealousies. Outbursts of wrath. It's going by the flesh. Even when you're driving and someone cuts you off. Selfish ambitions. i got to move quick. <laughs> you can tell that one, that one convicted you. Dissensions, heresies. Are you depressed yet? I hope not. This is simply a list of the way most people are living in America, even those that have the placard of Christian up on their life. Verse 21 of Galatians 5. Envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries. If you don't know what that is, I, I mentioned it the other day. It's Loud music being played, alcohol being consumed, and sexual acts being performed. Every club pretty much fulfills that. What is that? The standard of the flesh. And the like, Galatians 5.21 says, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things are going to stroll over heaven with you. That's not what it says, yet people want to do that at funerals, right? This is a great person. We'll see you again in heaven. Not if this was your standard. And the Bible, Holy Spirit inspired this, made it so clear. I remember 17 years old studying the Bible because I'm facing this with some friends I have. that are like, it ain't wrong to party. They're going to house parties and such. And they're like, the Bible don't say nothing about a house party. I know the word. And I was like, man, you know, I don't know anywhere in the Bible that says house parties are wrong. I was looking for house parties. I did a search. Couldn't find house parties. But the day I studied my Bible, see, this is why you can't just read your Bible. I just came across revelries. I said, there it is. So I went back to my friend, all well-meaning. Hey, hey, you know what? I found it in the Bible. And you know what he said? You do your truth, I'll do my truth. Only thing is, if your truth isn't based on the absolute truth, then it's a lie. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. When we live by the Spirit, not only will we see love, joy, but we'll see this, peace. This literally means prosperity, quietness, and rest. I just explained why some of you can't sleep at night. You don't need to take a pill. You need to go pray in the Holy Ghost. And if you, if you don't take a cue from me, we come to prayer here at 6.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm walking the whole time because if I get still, I'm going to sleep because this fruit is real, my friend. I'm, it's not hype. You start praying in the Holy Ghost, peace is going to hit your life. Now, I know because I always make jokes about, hey, at least you got some sleep out of this today because there's people asleep, right? And people are always like, are there really people asleep? I'm sure. I'm not going and examining everyone's eyes, but I'm sure some people are asleep. Some have learned to sleep looking straight forward, looking like they're doing something. <laughs> Sounds like I hit a few of you with that one. But I don't mind. You know why? Because this is the only peace some people get. Because there's the fruit of peace in this building. 
Listen, I've already counseled. I don't know how many people in my office, and I'll look at them. They could be going through hell on earth. I mean, if I describe to you what they're going through, you would call it hell on earth. And I'll say, what do you feel right now? And they'll say, peace for the first time. I'm like, why? Because peace is here. Because I make room for the Holy Spirit here. Amen. Why? Because I found out I can't produce this. I can't fabricate a peace. Right? This peace will be produced as you fellowship with the Holy Spirit and you're led by him. When you're led by him, he's always going to use peace as the umpire. See, the the Lord's not going to give you peace to go hang out with your flaky worldly friends that are trying to get you back into alcohol. People, well, I have peace there. I don't have peace at church. You got things all backwards. Who do you think it is that's causing you a lack of peace when you come to church? Satan. He wants you in his grip. And if you've been yielding to him, you come here and you hear messages like this, it's going to make you feel uncomf. I actually pray that the Lord helps sinners feel uncomfortable here so that they don't just come in and out like some cattle at many places where they never feel a verifiable pull from the Holy Spirit or conviction of sin and live in the average American Christian lifestyle. Those days are over for me, playing games with God. I've got to have the real genuine peace of God. And peace is an offensive and a defensive weapon in the Spirit. When you read in the Bible, your feet are shod with the preparation of peace. It was a reference to the Roman soldiers that put on sandals for war. And these sandals had on them a long pointy stick, for lack of a better way of describing it. And let me tell you what would happen. It would pierce somebody. And if they kicked you with that, it literally could be a death blow. When you have on peace, every step you take, even this week, every demonic force that comes against you is getting the old spike. (laughs) Woo! Glory to God. You know what this means? Agitation. Lack. Restlessness. Are all rooted to living according to the flesh. When you follow the Holy Spirit, he produces long-suffering. This is endurance. I already said it, but I think it bears repeating. Giving up easily is rooted in living according to the flesh. If you live by the Spirit, you can endure. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter how you feel. You get through everything, and you say, I'm making it to the end. There's a reason Jesus said in Matthew 10, those that endure to the end shall be saved. Not those that give up three quarters of the way through. Not those that live 80 years for the Lord, then give up. You don't have a good reason to ever give up on the Lord. You've got to keep going. Look at your neighbor. Say, keep going. When you follow the Spirit, he produces kindness. I think kindness is a poor translation here out of New King James. Because what it means in the Greek is usefulness and moral excellence. Two things missing in most Christians' life. Now listen, if you live according to the flesh, your feelings, you become useless in the kingdom of God. Because why? God can't even depend on you to show up at church faithfully. I'm amazed how people can't even show up faithfully, and yet they want to teach pastor how he's wrong on something. I saw Walmart had on special some paper shredders. I think I'll go back and buy me one because I saw it. Because I heard my pastor say that. He learned about the shredder years ago. In fact, you don't know what my pastor did one time, Dr. Barkley? Somebody wrote him a letter, this just scathing letter. He went and shredded it, put it back in the envelope, and said, return to sender. Sender. (laughs) Not sinner, sender. Yeah. It's kind of like all these armchair quarterbacks. They watch these guys in the NFL. You know what all they've been through to even get there? They're sorry quarterbacks. And what are you? You're not even useful on a men's... Flag football team. I'm just saying, like, it's easy to be, get caught up in that in our society. They're terrible. Should we talk about you? Nah, let's not do that. But there's something a lot more important than being useful on a football field or basketball court. It's in the kingdom of God. Because I just want to tell you something. You might achieve the best of the best awards. And you know what? That's why I hats off to our own deacon and 
And to Evan for making the, the All-State teams, I think that's pretty cool. All-State. Like the All-Star team for the state. That's, that's pretty cool. But you know what? When they face God, he's not going to be looking for that award. He's not going to be looking for that medal that Deacon's going to get for that. I've seen the medal. It's cool. I think it's neat. I'm not against it. But I just, I just think this. There's a lot of people living their entire lives putting all this effort into something that doesn't amount to anything useful in the kingdom at all. Now, there are those that God has called to that realm to be useful for the kingdom. But those guys get nailed to the wall, such as Tim Tebow. All he ever does is preach. All, it's all he ever does. He's useful for the kingdom. He's still speaking. I was in another city, and I saw on their big billboard, Tim Tebow's coming and speaking. He was preaching. I said, look at that. The dude's a preacher. I think I got more respect for that than any pass he made for the Florida Gators when he won the championship. You know what I'm talking about? we got to be useful in the kingdom. How are we going to be useful? Just because we are us? No, because we spend time with the Holy Spirit, and we're led by him, and we're being filled by him, and we spend time yielding day after day to praying in the Holy Spirit, and he just makes you useful. It just shows up where you become useful to the kingdom. I know for a fact the only reason that I'm on these radio stations across America and on television growing across America, is because I spend time praying in the Holy Spirit. It's certainly not my education. It's not even my mom and dad. It's not even you fine folks. You want to know what it is? It's the Holy Spirit making me and you together useful. Wow. Now, some people struggle with what I'm talking about. If you live according to the flesh, feelings makes you useless. A great example of this, jot this down, is found in John 20, 25. I don't have it on the screen. It's where Thomas said, quote, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, he's taking lots of flack over that. One thing people overlook is all the disciples had seen already all of that. But here's what's crazy. He was in your and my boat. We haven't actually seen Jesus. But we've heard about the king that rose from the dead. We've heard about it. And here he was with his friends. He had missed church. They're gathering together, and he never knows. See, when Jesus is going to just walk through the door, excuse me, the wall, he didn't need a door anymore, his resurrected body. He told them all, look at me, touch me. A week went by. Hey, his boys had hollered at him in that week and said, hey, Jesus is alive. He, I'm not going to believe unless with my senses I see it. Isn't that something? You know what Jesus' reply was to him? Stop being unbelieving. You need to believe. That tells us something. Gives us some great insight to producing this fruit and to winning the fight of faith. Unbelief many times is not a lack of believing, but rather believing the wrong thing. The very first time we came uh, to check out Accelerate, um, I believe my husband came with me that very first time. Um, and I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that's what, I knew that that's where I was called. Um, so, me and the kids continued to come back um, every Sunday and every Wednesday. I remember women were thinking that I was the single mom because my husband wasn't there, but I remained faithful and I kept coming. I would say at that point, our marriage was rocky. Um, I know that had we not stopped or started coming to church, I wouldn't be married today. That was something that I didn't ask him and wake him up every morning and say, you coming this time? Or, you know, Wednesday, you coming today? I just kept coming and I'll say, hey, we're going to church, see you later. And like I said, I remained faithful. I prayed for him and it was like this one empty seat, like one day he's gonna fill this seat. <laughs> so that morning was just like our normal chaotic Sunday morning, getting ready to go. Um, I was in the kitchen, you know, getting the kids breakfast and stuff ready and walked back into my room where my husband was normally still asleep 
and he was up putting on a button-up shirt and I remember him just, oh, sorry. <laughs> I remember him buttoning his shirt up that morning and I knew he wasn't going to the gym because he was wearing a button-up shirt. So I was like, well, where are you going? And he said, I'm coming with you to church. So I said, okay. And then I walked out, I was like, praise the Lord, he's coming. <laughs> you know, after my husband came to church with me, um, after those months, I was, I think we were at home after church, and I said, well, what caused you to come like with us to church? And he said, honestly, I've seen a change in you, and I wanted what you have. I would say right around that time, um, I thought my marriage was over. And that statement alone was confirmation that it's not. And for him to see that change in me, because I kept showing up, now he keeps showing up. And my kids keep showing up. And now we have his little brother. I would say like my personal little motto for anything is keep showing up. And I continually showed up. I didn't care that people thought I was a single mom or that I didn't have a husband at home. But one thing I would not do, um, don't nag them, just pray for them and they'll show up. And that's, that's another thing too, it, you showing up and being faithful is going to change the trajectory of everyone behind you and everyone after you. Because one little thing that I had in my mind to remain determined and to keep showing up, it changed my family. It brought me and my husband closer together. It has really strengthened our family. Like I said, we have custody of his little brother now. So now we're changing his trajectory and those after him. We have custody of my stepdaughter. We're changing the trajectory of her life. So you remaining faithful and diligent is going to affect more than just you. Unbelief is believing according to the wrong standard. The flesh, the senses. You say, what? I don't believe. Well, it's because you're going by your senses. You're like Thomas. I, he said that. I will not believe. Even though they're telling him right to his face, men that he's seen and known and walked with. They've cast out demons together. They've watched all this. And yet he said, I ain't going to believe it unless I see it. Unless I touch it. Unless I feel it. And you know what? When Jesus showed up and he was there, he went to Thomas first thing. He said, here, feel of me. He said, you need to stop being unbelieving. What was that? He had the wrong standard. See, unbelief, we, we think it's, well, they just don't believe. Well, they're holding the wrong standard. I had a guy tell me this week, same guy I talked to, her, I talked to about earlier, a professor. Talked to him about lying and stealing. Now, I didn't even get around to anything else because he was so hostile. He said, hey, I can see these folks. It's transvestites. I can't see your hell. And then he walked off. I said, well, hold up. I didn't even bring up hell. <laughs> Whoa. That lets me know where you're tracking with this. What was that? His standard was set on what he can see. My little children were out there with several others holding signs. Jesus is coming. If you're in sin, repent. I was like, and they're bold, they're loving. And this old guy couldn't even walk. He had two canes. He comes walking up. He comes up real fast. You going to live to be 85? Starts intimidating some kids. Now, I was distracted. I didn't see all this. But he ends up telling my wife, you don't even know the Bible. <laughs> and my son Enoch was like, he didn't know you were Pastor Jeremy's wife, did he? <laughs> and no, he didn't care either. But Tyrone walked up, and by the way, thanks to all of you that came out about that. We just spread word of mouth about that and came out there. That was encouraging. But Tyrone walks up to me, and I said, see, this old guy, he was leaning up right there just laughing. He was mocking and my children. So, and once I was told this, my daughter came and told me, and she had tears in her eyes. For his soul, not because she was upset, tears, he came and he did this. I said, that old man intimidated my 12-year-old girl. Well, you're really tough, ain't you? So I, I walked up there, and Tyrone's standing there by me. I said, this guy right here, intimidated. He walks up to intimidate kids. He's all smiling. I said, I said you're running out of time. 
smile went off his face after that. You hold the wrong standard. I'm letting you know you're running out of time. It's time to get a new standard. Hear me? We're talking about how to win the fight of faith. We've got to follow the Holy Spirit. When we do, what happens? He produces love, joy, peace, long-suffering. And what else? Kindness, usefulness, moral excellence. Let me just say this. Morals matter to the people that are led by the Holy Ghost. They may not matter to you, but that doesn't mean you're led by the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of people that claim they're led by the Spirit. Morals don't matter. Whatever. I found out it's a fruit of the Spirit to hold a high standard of morals. Yeah. Next, we see this. Goodness. In the Greek, this means virtue, righteous, uprightness, and look at this one, integrity. Mm. I like this because the Holy Spirit, John 16, 13, you might jot that down if you want to, John 16, 13, don't have it on the screen. The Holy Spirit guides a person into all truth. In other words, the Holy Spirit has never learned Uh, led a person into a lie, nor led any person to tell a lie. Jesus said, Satan is the father of all lies. That's who leads you to lie. Stop claiming you're led by the Spirit and you lie all the time. Wow. You know, a good liar believes their lies. A good liar has had a lot of fellowship with the devil. They just don't always recognize it because he didn't show up with a pitchfork and horns. He showed up with a lie to spare your tail from trouble, you think. Wow, but the Holy Spirit, he guides you into all truth. He always leads us into truth. So you know he's never going to lead you into a lie. Uh, The news channel did an uh, interview with me. They wouldn't play any of it because I went preacher mode on them. But I asked asked the guys, they asked me a question. I said, let me ask you a question. Is it love to lie? They're like, huh? I said, if someone lies to you, is that love? No. It's not. So if you're living a lie, why are you claiming it's love? Well, unfortunately, we do have to stop right there. We are out of time today. However, if you would like to hear more from this series on how to win the fight of faith, you can head over to our website at accelerate.church.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find this message in its entirety, plus so many more that you can listen to throughout your week. But if you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Or you can write us, email us, we would love to hear from you. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.